Hello and welcome to Africa Today. I am Esther Macquariola. Once upon a time in Africa, many centuries ago, when the pages of history were still scanty, kingdoms began to rise from the dark, empires grew towards light, and existence on modern land was largely rough, rugged, and raw. But with shackles in hand and chains in leg, the story suddenly took a different twist as African slaves were shipped across the Atlantic and dehumanized in a strange land, leaving trails of tears, sweat and blood for about 400 years. And so we ask, what are your thoughts on the practice and impact and the eventual abolition of slave trade in Africa? You can join the conversation and share your thoughts with us on Twitter at TVC News NG. We take a report and Africa Today will continue. Welcome on board. Old pirates, yes, they rob I, sold I to the merchant ships. Badagri is a coastal town and local government area in Lagos State, Nigeria. It was founded in the early 15th century on a lagoon off the Gulf of Guinea. Then, its inhabitants lived along the coast of Berefu, which later gave birth to the town. It is bordered on the south by the Gulf of Guinea and surrounded by creeks, islands and a lake. Badagri is a few kilometers from Seme, a border town to the Republic of Benin. The town subsists largely on fishing and agriculture and maintains a small museum of slavery. Its protected harbor led to the town becoming a key port in the export of slaves to the Americas in the 1500s. It was also a big departure point for slaves headed for Haiti. Every part of Badagri has an interesting historic twist to it. The town showcases an exciting blend of incredible art, momentous history, and amazing town lifestyle. This island played a major role in the history of the contact between Nigeria, Europe, and the Americas. It was a major slave outpost and market during the centuries of slave trade, and this point is the route of the journey to a known destination. This particular path, we call it the slave route. Slaves walked on this particular route for about 300 years. When you walk on this route, you are making history. And as you walk on the route, you begin to imagine the experiences of the ancestors. The chains, sunlight will equally make it very, very hot. So the chains were hot, the sun is very hot, and they're not putting on any shoes. And as they are walking on the slave route, one of them may fall and die. If such happen, if they have enough time, they will unchain another slave who will dig the ground to bury such a person. Between the early 1500 and 1787, no fewer than 550,000 African slaves passed through this island to America, Europe, South Africa, and the Caribbean. The 400 years of Pan-Atlantic slave trade constitutes the darkest history of mankind. The infamous slave trade might have ended, but as the Jamaican reggae legend Bob Marley said, there were no chains around the feet of Africans. But Africans are still not free. Welcome back. In August 22nd and 23rd, 1971, acts of bravery met the practice of slavery in what saw the beginning of the uprising in Haiti that later played a crucial role in the abolition of the transatlantic slave trade. Every year, International Day for the Remembrance of the Slave Trade and its Abolition is marked to give people a chance to reflect on the causes and consequences of slave trade. Joining me on the, in the studio on Africa Today, I have Ifama Beru, a historian, scholar and pan-Africanist. And I also have Tosin Akonde, lawyer and with expertise in international law, and politically based analyst, political analyst rather, based in Lagos, Nigeria. Good to have you gentlemen on the show. Today. Sorry. Yes, we just heard the report by one of our own uh, Dodger and the, 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 the script she put out really is touching, you know, having to recount the experiences of our forefathers in the hands of, uh, you know, their slave masters. But today we are asked to reflect on the causes and consequences of slave trade. Now, to you, Tosin, what would you say 
were the causes of this inhumane act way back before our generation ever came to existence? <clears throat> Thank you, Esther. Um, I must confess, I almost got tearful uh, watching that uh, report by Dada Jasala. Uh, well, um, maybe because now, still relics of slavery and what have you, of a Christian faith. Now I'm of the Christian faith. You know, the Bible says that there's nothing new under the sun. Um, in Genesis 15 and verse 13, the Bible said God spoke to Abraham and told him that his descendants will be slaves in a foreign land for 400 years. And I feel that's a somehow prophetic because we, talk that we are talking about transatlantic slave trade that lasted nearly or a little over 400 years. So if you see what were the causes, I, I think um, it's, um, the, we should ask Africans, what's happened to Africa from time immemorial? Because I understand from research, you see, the new worlds in international relations refer to America, the Americas, both North America and South America as the new worlds. So to me, in my humble opinion, <coughs> and, and uh, according to historians, the white you know, race have always been aware of Eurasia. I'm talking about the Ottoman Empire, the Turkeys of this world, and the Muslim Arab nations of this world. Of course, for religious differences, they feared to deal with them at the outset of industrialization. I'm talking about the industrial age in Europe. So the next stop was going to be Africa. And then when they came here, um, at first, we operated on equal bargaining power. But after some time, I think they were negatively smarter. They got negatively smarter mm. and um, decided to start raiding. So. A, a few people will say, but African leaders connived with them to fetch the slaves. I said, I also disagree with them. I said, no, it's not entirely true. At a point, they started dictating to African leaders and forced their way in and carried out raids mm. and took our people. An estimated 15 million people. So the only thing I even want, feel like talking about today is that we sustain the issue of reparations. They just have to pay us. Hmm. Do you share the same sentiment from my bedroom? Oh, certainly. Um, just that I really do not think that uh, we agree with um, the um, reason that you gave in respect to the antecedent or um, the cause of um, what we consider to be the Atlantic um, slavery today. Um, really because for us, we give it an economic outlook, of, of course. You know, the discovery of the Americas, um, the need for slaves, the need for um, labor, human labor to work on the plantations and what have you. And, you know, when the Americas was um, so-called discovered by Christopher um, Columbus, um, they met the Indians and they worked on the Indians. But, of course, the Indians gave up at a point in time and they looked towards Africa for labor. We give it an economic outlook, mm. the need for labor, free labor, human labor to work on the plantations. But understanding that, beyond that, we found out that there's this thing, there's this thing scientific about the nature and character mm. of the perpetrators, the white people who carried out this injustice you know, that have ever been recorded in the hands of human history. And I'm not just saying this from the abstract. You know, we've had scientists, even the scientists have worked on this. And they, you know, they, 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 they've, they've, of course, um, come up with evidence, enough evidence to back this up. They've made a research on white people. And it appears to them that um, no race, no group of people have um, agreed with five people have lived with five people, you know, uh, peacefully since the, the, you know, since their discovery mm -hmm. or since they left, you know, their caves, you know, many many, many centuries ago. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So really, no one has been able to agree with them. So there's this thing, you know, natural about them, which is the urge to consume, the urge to take things that necessarily do not belong to you, mm -hmm. the urge for them. It is called greed. You Sorry. understand what I'm saying? Okay. So okay. It, it has nothing to do with any prophetic. You know, um, justification, it has nothing to so do with the Bible. man's insatiable Exactly, the instinct, need. the natural instinct of white people, mm. you know, to consume, to take, to steal. You know, clearly because they've never had anything worthwhile. You mm. understand what I'm saying? Mm. Mm. So when you look at all of these things, you will see that all what Europe is done with today, all what America is done with today are, of course, stolen properties, mm. stolen goods. 
And that's why I quite agree with, you know, the barrister on the basis of what? Reparation. Repar repar you know, but yeah. when we speak of reparation, we are not just speaking of reparation within the context of financial benefits. We are not just speaking of uh, reparation within the context of financial uh, commitment mm -hmm. by these people. Of course, finance is jamming. Finance is essential. But reparation itself speaks about what? Self-repair. The need for us, you know, masses of black people, descendants, mm -hmm. you know, of, uh, 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 of, of so-called slaves mm -hmm. to work on our minds. Because you and I know that, um, slave, of course, they say slavery has ended, even when we believe that slavery is very still much alive. You understand what I'm saying? But the legacies of slavery, you know, slavery ended, but the, the first, legacies, yeah. the first images, mm -hmm. slavery cost, mm -hmm. the first images, the first impressions slavery gave us as a people is still very much alive. And that's why it is so easy for you to see the masses of black people today so ignorant about who they are, so ignorant about their past, so ignorant about their personality. So when you take a look at an ordinary African, an ordinary young African lady who does not like his melanin, who does not, I mean, who does, who does not appreciate, the skin yeah, color. exactly, and who look at herself in the mirror and say her blackness is not okay, she needs to get rid of it by taking to bleaching creams. You see, that is not fashionable. Yeah. There's nothing fashionable about that. It's a, it's a water it's a mentality. Mental. So we are now living in a era of mental slavery we used to call it post-traumatic slave syndrome but it's not a post about our state All right, let's, let's hold your thoughts for there quite an extensive one i would say but let's go on a quick break you've been we've been looking at the practice and impact and eventual abolition of slave trade in africa we have more discussions after this time out Welcome back. Decades after its abolition, slavery continues to find expression in other forms, disrupting societies and distorting systems, especially in Africa and third world countries around the world. From the girl down the street forced into prostitution to the man on a plantation field against his will, modern day slavery is a painful reality where no matter where you live, chances are that it is happening nearby and right now. Now, Tosin, quite an elaborate one given by Ifama Beru on his thoughts and perspectives on, you know, the causes of slave trade and where we are today. But today we have been talking about modern day slavery, irrespective of what we're talking about the past. My question, why do we still have this present? Is it that the mentality of, you know, not believing in what you can do for yourself than to depend on others or what exactly is really causing modern day slavery. Let me I'll just put it that way. See, there are two sides to a coin. Um, I've still not recovered from the, you know, incidences of um, sorrow, having watched, you know, that uh, point of no return video. That, they call that place point of no return, where you, you are not going to return back to your homeland. You're gone for good. Now, um, I'll still blame it all believing in what you can do for yourself than to depend on others or what exactly is really causing modern day slavery let me I'll just put it that way see there are two sides to a coin um, I've still not recovered from the you know incidences of um, sorrow having watched you know that uh, point of no return video that they call that place point of no return where you you are not going to return back to your homeland you're gone for good now, um, I'll still blame it all on the African psyche. Because I said earlier that um, when they came, they, they, they were negatively smarter. They deceived us first with the news of commerce, religion, and education. You know, but then, real uppermost on their mind was this slavery thing. Why can't the natives of the Americas work on their plantations? That's the multi-million dollar question I'm going to be asking. Because if you read every article up on this transatlantic slavery thing, 
you will see them justifying that it's the only the black man that can walk on the fields. Why can't the natives, the Indians, the red Indians, who are the original landowners, why can't they walk on their plantations? Why must it be the black man? So I think it must, slavery must have been an afterthought, owing to the weakness, I dare repeat, owing to the weakness of our ancestors. It doesn't mean that they are weak as compared to their European counterparts, no. But there was just one slip which became a monumental tragedy. But the, a case of where you have child prostitution, human trafficking, should we now relate that to our ancestors being the cause of it? Because no, no, no. that is I'm what taking, slavery I'm, I'm in taking it, today. I'm taking it systematically. Because if slave trade had not occurred at all, we probably wouldn't have had the kinds of problems we are having now. So I'm coming back to the faults, which is more pronounced on the part of Africans. Some will argue, to the contrary, that while well, slave trade ended several um, hundreds of years ago, why do we still have that problem? The problem of slave trade is such that it could almost alter the genetic makeup of an individual. Do you know what it means? Look at all those chains. Look at those shackles. If you get there, they would have been smeared with hot iron to brand them. The slave of Mr. Little is not the same, will be branded differently from the slave of Mr. Williams. These people, if you can't imagine what they went through. Mm. Even those who escaped it, who are here, must have gotten a psychological trauma. Can we survive these white invaders? And so on and so forth. Now, slavery has ended. How come Africa is yet to emancipate? What is the problem? Because every day on this program especially, you know, you and I know very well, we, we devote a lot of attention to migration issues. Mm. Why is it that the sky, appear, the grass, appears greener on, on the, the other, other side. side every time? Wouldn't for once, and yet there is always sunshine here. So this is where it should be greener. So this is where it should be greener. It's to the, be the problem past. of leadership. It's okay. not enough. Chief Obafemi Aolo, my mentor, I always talk about him. He said, and I quote, it's not the number of times a man falls that matters, but the number of times a man falls and rises again. African leaders fell for the negative devices of the white men, and then it resulted into over 400 years of unnecessary slavery, which is in Swahili, they call it maafa, M-A-A-F-A. They say the greatest disaster mm. that has ever happened to mankind is 400 years of transatlantic slavery. Mm. That's what they call it in Swahili, maafa. So if you are saying maafa, how can we recover? Germany went through World War I, the Treaty of Versailles. So how can we recover? That that's you. the problem of leadership. That's why you need to support calls by right-thinking members of this country to you know, get our government going. Government cannot get anything done on its own all the time. It must learn to lean backwards you know, to take initiatives from the citizenry. That's how it is done. Right. Not such that when you are talking, they think they brand you anti-government and then they start hounding you. But I tell the truth, right now, Africa is seriously in need of visionary leaders, not just celebrated mm. leaders. Visionary leadership, quite agree with you there. But if I'm a bearer, we're not, we, before we we went on break. You were pointing out that the history, that the legacy of the slave trade has given us uh, social injustice, racism, racial discrimination, and other things like that, and we are yet to, you know, go out of it. So Absolutely. how can we, you know, get out of that uh, negative circle that has been a part of our system over a, a period of time now? Um, well, uh, uh, so before addressing that, I think mm. it is important to state that um, for many of us, uh, our understanding, our history, our knowledge of what happened during the um, transatlantic slavery is not that coherent. And you see, that is not accidental. You know, our knowledge of the past in this part of the world is not what it ought to be. And that is why I think it is important for many of us to understand that before you know, the European came down you know, to kidnap our people, before the <laughs> transatlantic slavery, we had the Arab slave trade. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Would we then say that the Arab slave trade you know, occurred as a result of the lapses of the failures of our ancestors? Mm. No. Will we say, did, did it occur because of the naivety of our ancestors? I don't think that is correct. Mm. You see, we have got to study the personality, the nature and character of African people. You would see that, really, African people, we are these welcoming people. Of course, it has been a problem mm. today. It appears to be a problem today. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is like um, one of our weaknesses, mm. you know, because we are welcoming. Mm -hmm. we, we, you know, we welcome everybody. We embrace everybody, strangers. Mm -hmm. We welcome strangers more than we welcome ourselves. <laughs> That's our nature. <laughs> but take a look at it. <laughs> 
it has become what it has it has been used against us. It was used against us by the Arabs and it was used against us by the Europeans. Are you get what I'm saying now? The Arabs, they don't have the personality we have, they are not welcoming. The Europeans, they don't have the personality we have, they are not welcoming. And that's why everything about them is always based within the context of what? Getting things that do not belong to them, stealing things that do not belong with them, hurting people, killing people. You understand what I'm saying now? That's that's their nature. But that's not our nature, but that, that which they've used against us. So I would say, the only mistake our ancestors did was to, was to understudy these people and was to understand that this is what they are made up of and we must form strategic, you know, formidable forces against them. Mm. That was the only mistake we made. Mm. But it is not in our nature to be doing the things of which they are doing. It is not in our nature to be doing the, up, I mean, odious things, despicable things that the Arabs did, not the Europeans. Now to address your question, All right. we have got to come up with what I call the, uh, I mean, the other time, self repairs. We have got to work on what we have. You see, the mind, the mind is the most important part of, is the most important um, feature in the body. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. You take the mind, you take the body. What we have today, like I said earlier on, is that the first impressions, the first images that slavery created still lives with us today. And you see, you cannot get anything reasonable out of someone that has a backward mind that have a backward conception of his or herself. You look at yourself in the mirror and you think you're, 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 you're a second-class human being. You know, you, you, you lack that self-esteem. You, you really do not think highly of yourself. You understand what I'm saying? You cannot get anything profitable done with that kind of person. And the chunk of mass of black people today are living under that condition. So does it, does yeah. it answer the question of what we see in modern-day slavery from what your perspective? But, well, I, I would say it is, but not trying to get ourselves out of this problem it's not going to be something we have to expect those in power to do those in power will never do that because those in power do not even understand the kind of state the present state we are into as masses of black people they yeah. don't understand us you know they what? don't understand our social realities and conditions <laughs> you know so what? the job of coming up with self-repair mm. must be something we have got to do ourselves and the problem of this continent or the problem of um the african continent all right the, or the black world as it as it, as it is it's not the, it's not the, it's not it's not, the, it's not the problem of leadership okay you see it is beyond the question of leadership all right it is a systematic problem all right those in power they do and you know that's why when you look at this country of today we speak about leadership we've been having leaders since 1960 why do we still remain what we have all right, right point now? taking it is because there, we are operating under a backward system mm -hmm. all right backward all right. economic system all right. all right. I, 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 I need to make it far no problem Let's it's not an argument, basically. Mm. No, 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 it's but not. See, I'm just, um, I'm just, you know, put, you know, we have got to. U.S. Yeah, on. To, yeah. you know. U.S. on when you say the problem is systematic, mm -hmm. it's simply put, it's institutional. But you see, followers, we are, we are not, we are not um, in a banana republic. Followers will not fix it. It's leadership that will fix it. Okay, so I'm still going to restate that the problem of this world, Africa, is leadership. We don't have visionary. We are in the earth of visionary leaders. Now, I was going to say something. You see, we are talking, m not many people are talking about the Arab slave trade. Not many people know that there were about four exit points from which African able-bodied men who would have contributed reasonably to the growth of Africa were mm -hmm. taken away from Africa. Mm -hmm. The first one was the Arab slave trade. They took about 3.5 million or 4 million people. But the second and the most important is the transatlantic slave trade, which took over an estimated 15 million people. And that's why we are talking specifically about this one. Mm -hmm. There were other areas through the Pacific Ocean of Madagascar and so on and so forth. Africans were taken away. You know, but you see, the transatlantic continues to recur. It, con it is a recurring factor because it took more people. Mm -hmm. And the wickedness is untold. We were not really, there's no kind of read that wouldn't be accompanied by violence. But mm -hmm. this particular transatlantic, we've watched the details, we've seen the gory details, the videos. I mean, white people were, 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 were inhuman. Mm. And they just need to be humble enough. There are two sides of the coin, I insist. Our problem is still there. We hope we'll be able to fix it. But then, as we say in Yoruba, or in Africa, let's s send away the fox before we, we, we talk about the fault of the hen, which mm. is at home with us. Mm. Let's look at the international faults first. For Germany, for instance, to accept that in clause 231 of the, 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 the Treaty of Versailles, that we were wrong, we caused the world war, and it was needless. We will pay. They are paying about 772 million euros now mm. in value mm. to the Jews. Mm. Now, why can't Holland 
England especially, Great Britain, because they were, the chief, they were the chief pro 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 proponents of slave trade. Mm. And uh, France, mm. and so on and so forth. Why can't they come together to say, okay, let's give this kind of aid, mm. support, apart from the ones they've been doing, doing yet, yeah. for, for the basis of compensation for slave, yeah. for slave trade. Okay, but what are your recommendations on how the continent can reparation reclaim first. its Reparation lost must come. Okay. Reparation must come. Even if we take the money and, and our leaders corruptly spend it again, let it come from them first. Mm. Mm -mm. It has to come from them. Because if it doesn't come, we'll still keep talking about reparations. Mm. So it has to first of all come. And then we pray on the other hand that our leaders don't corruptly spend it. But it has to come because they wronged us. They wronged us, <laughs> and they have to own up. <laughs> this thing changed the entire, you know, the entire gamut of mankind. Indeed, indeed. Well, and uh, so they must own up. All right, if I might bear a few last words, recommendations on how the continent can reclaim its last glory. Well, its I, lost I, I, glory, think I, I agree with um, the barrister on the, on the question of reparation. Mm. And, um, you know, I really do not think, given the dividends or the financial commitment that will come out of reparation, giving it to this backward bourgeois African leaders that we have, I really do not think it would be the right thing to do. So what it is the right thing? The right thing would be that we must work on rebuilding all of the institutions, all, all right. of the systems that we had in place before the arrival of the Caucasians, mm. before the white and you know, the white folks arrived on the our institutions continent. Institutions mean like what? The systems, okay. our political system, right. our cultural system, our social system, our economic systems. Sure. We had all of these things in place before the arrival. Mm. And they gave us all of their alien systems and that explains why we are what we why we are where we are right now today. So on to age we change so, everything. Yeah, exactly. So the question of reparation is important. Mm. It's yeah. important on the basis that we must get all of those funds. But getting all of those funds does not mean that we must surrender those funds to these bourgeois African leaders. They must be surrendered to you know, right-thinking organization, pan-Africanist, rooted right. revolutionary okay. organization, la, la, who are going la, to la, use la, this right. thing for me. Well, well, this well, let's leave for me, pan, for, for, for me, this is very <laughs> important. Pan-Africanism yeah. will require okay. that what is bad about Africa be put down. All right. And what is taken. good about Africa be promoted. Thank you we very much. We have our faults, too. No, our faults are, are not political are not, analysts. Are not, uh, thank you very much. Annie from Beru. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Pan-African. Uh, uh, yeah. Pan-Africanist no, based in Lagos, Nigeria. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, guys. This is where we have to <laughs> okay. end up the show for now. But thanks a lot for all you've thank said you so far on Africa Today. While slavery has been practiced for almost the whole of human existence and history, the vast numbers involved in slave trade across Africa has left a legacy that cannot be ignored. Beyond the excuse, excuse rather, of slavery and the bail of honor development on the continent, Africa must break free from the shackles of the past and contemplate the choices of the present to brighten the chances of the future. And that is our package for today. But don't forget to join the conversation on Twitter at TVCNewsNG. And also follow me for updates around Africa at Esther TVC News. Until the next one, I am Esther Macquariola. And always remember, change starts with you. Bye for now.